Hey there, happy day 1073 of What You Up To Now. Sharon Hornelson here, documenting my journey as I transition from the brick and mortar world, corporate world over a quarter century in corporate America and 47 plus years in, in different businesses and industries to the online world. In 2017, as part of my divorce and divesting myself of all my previous businesses, especially with the ex-husband, the opportunity to, to sit back and say, okay, what do I want to do? What do I really want to do now? And although I was old, er, I'm older now, right, than 2017, I, I wasn't done yet. I wasn't done, I hope, adding value to the world. And so I decided I was going to follow my curiosity and that led me to the online world. And I back then decided I would recreate online the success I had had in the offline business world. Now I'm still working on that. Thus, day 1073 of chatting up and sharing my business journey, documenting my journey of what I'm doing. Now you might be thinking, well, why the heck do you hop on and talk about your journey every day? Why do we care? Well, number one, I am visually challenged, legally blind, and I used to write everything down and put everything in journals, but I found that as my vision has slipped away, my ability to capture things in writing and then actually retrieve them in any meaningful way has become more challenging. So instead of writing things down, I decided I would just keep a little video log, a little video blog, so to speak, and, and track what I'm doing, what's working, what's not working, you know, how I'm feeling, what I'm learning, things like that, in the hopes that someone else can learn from my mistakes so they don't have to make them themselves. Because it can really shortcut the process when you learn what not to do as much as when you learn what to do. Everybody wants to jump right to, this is what you need to do to be successful. Well, guess what? This is what that person did to be successful. But since your experience leading up to the point that you found them is probably different than the person who used their process, their signature process themselves, your results are gonna vary. They're gonna always vary. We have to learn things, and that's the topic for today. Learn, do, practice, dot, dot, dot. Because I want to say continuously improve, repeat, or whatever, but, but the truth is we learn all of us by, by hearing about something. And then how we learn is different for each of us. Maybe you're an experiential learner where you have to hop in like on the job training. Somebody shows you how to do something, you do it yourself, you practice it, and then you make it your own. Um, I like to learn in all different ways. I like to learn auditorily. I like to hear things. I like to go to experiences like events, live events and, and seminars and webinars. And all well, those are remote nowadays. All of them are. But I like to go to events and have an, an experience along with the learning. Uh, I like to read. And reading is definitely a challenge for me these days. But I have a 62-inch screen TV. So I can still blow things up on that and find some ways to read. Doing a lot more audiobooks, which I find frustrating unless I can like double or triple speed the playback of them because it takes so much longer to listen to something than it does to just pick out the bits and pieces that you want to uh, read or listen to. I learned from Havel Beckford, who's an amazing lady, how to uh, read a book without having to read every single word of a book. For somebody like me, that is life changing. So learn, do, practice until you can figure it out. Now, our idiom today for supersize your business was practice makes perfect. But I kind of backed off on that because do we really want to be perfect or do we want to be proficient or, or good enough? It depends on the task at hand. It depends on what we're doing. It depends what we're practicing. When we want to practice being the best version of ourselves, that's a continually improving thing. We're never going to be perfect. We're never going to be done becoming who it is that we're here to become on the planet. So to me, what is perfection? Perfection is different for each of us. Perfect physically fit, perfect um, wisdom, perfect emotional intelligence, perfect appearance, perfect haircut. Definitely not. Perfect is, is so elusive and so subjective. It's like beauty. Beauty's in the eye of the beholder, just like perfection is so subjective. Is it something that we strive for? A lot of people do, me not so much. I found that trying to be perfect, trying to, and there's a difference between trying to be perfect and trying to be the best version of yourself. So that all takes, you know, practice, planning. And again, planning is part of the process, but it, it isn't the whole process. It's like 
Yesterday we talked about actions speak louder than words. We can talk and talk and talk till we're blue in the face, but if we never take action, if we never do anything, all of our talk, all of our planning, all of our uh, pontificating are for nothing. Is for naught. That's what popped into my head. So learn, do, practice, repeat. Learn, do, practice, repeat. Learn something new. Apply what you learn. There's, you know, we. I read a lot. I read, I, and I, I get access to a lot of information. Do I apply all of it? Well, heck no. None of us apply everything we learn. But about, I don't know, 30 years ago or so, maybe longer, I decided that if I was going to take my time and energy to learn something, I was going to actually do that. Now, I will admit that online, I have learned a lot of stuff, tried it out, and then abandoned it for the next shiny object. I, I never heard of shiny object syndrome until I came online. I, or, and same with FOMO. I never heard of fear of missing out. FOMO as a, as a term instead, you know, you know, missed opportunities. I heard of, you know, yeah, you can miss an opportunity or not take advantage of an opportunity and the opportunity cost. But online, it's called FOMO. Uh, when you get distracted by many things, it used to be, you know, serial entrepreneur. Now it's, you know, shiny object syndrome, depending on, actually depending on your results. If you are a serial entrepreneur and you're successful in most of what people see you do, then you're a serial entrepreneur. If you uh, are not successful, then people call it shiny object syndrome. I don't know why. I guess I do know why. Uh, everybody likes to label and name things so that we don't feel bad about our less than successful efforts. Uh, but I think actually it's all just part of the process. Each of us has a different process for becoming what it is and who it is we want to become here on the planet. And normally that involves some trial and error. <coughs> So Supersize Your Business today was all about practice makes perfect. Uh, doing two 365 day challenges, a little bit overlapping this year because we're finishing up the do one fun thing every day challenge, 365 day challenge from last year. Today was day 363, so we're almost done. I think we've got, probably we'll go to, I thought it was 368, but it's looking like 366 now. Excuse me. <coughs> Coffee went down the wrong pipe gave me a tickle. So that's one, and we'll be finishing this one up soon. And then we will just be to this year's, I guess I do a 365 day challenge every year. This is the fourth year in a row that I've done it. It's actually my, it's more than my fourth 365 day challenge because some I have that have overlapped. I think it was 2018, early 2018. Uh, I did a 365 day challenge with a group of people, most of whom were from ClickFunnels, and we did a live video every day within a group about whatever topic we wanted to talk about, just to get us comfortable with doing live video. But I've been doing, I'd already started, I think the beginning of that year, my first 365 day challenge to do one thing every day that stretched my comfort zone, do one thing every day that scared me. And then the Next year I did do one thing every day that makes you happy, which carried over into 2019. But I learned that I didn't like carrying it over and forgot about it and started do one thing every day that makes that, that's fun. Yes, last year, but I didn't start it till the eighth because I didn't like doing two simultaneously. And I learned that that didn't work either. So this year I'm finishing off do one fun thing every day with uh, about a week of do one thing every day that centers you. This year's daily challenges all about you and all about me getting centered and I have found that I am very uncomfortable with this very uncomfortable with this topic I just finished the video and I stuttered and blah 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 my words and I'm like wow this is definitely an area that I want to practice this year to get better to understand myself better and secretly that's why I do challenges I did realize this morning I am real and this it's only the fifth of January so it's only been five days that I haven't done a 30-day challenge or a daily sharing video and that it's got me off kilter and off focus so I don't know if I'll wait till February 1st to do another get up and go challenge but there's definitely gonna be one coming up very soon in my future and hopefully in yours as well where we learn of course about 
and this is what came to me and I worked out in 2020. There's a lot of, 2020 was an, an incredibly bizarre year, but it was also a very interesting, very uh, enlightening, very eye-opening year. And one of the things I learned was to be more focused and I work on sharing what I call the SOAP framework with people. And I like SOAP. I've always liked soap, maybe because I was in the food industry for like 37 years and had to wash my hands 30 plus times a day. I was like, in the winter when you get those finger cuts from washing your hands too much, I pretty much had those year round from having to wash my hands so much in the food industry, which I'm not complaining, I love it. Uh, I think that it's a great industry, fun to be a part of, and it's one of the things that we strive for above and beyond anything COVID or safety related at least in many of us in the food industry. So I'm missing that. I'm missing sharing that framework because as I do a challenge, I actually do it right along with everybody. And so it means I am personally living and doing and focusing on the challenge for the day as well. And I find that last year I made incredible progress because of that. And in less than a week, five days, not doing it every day, I am noticing that I'm missing it and that it's it's leaving me not very centered. So I think that part of my being centered will be to pick that up again for 2021. And maybe I'll change the name of it. I doubt it. I think Get Up and Go is a great name because when we're faced with a challenge, when we're faced with a change, when we're faced with chaos and craziness around us, we tend to, human nature, at least I tend to, shut down and stop and wait for something to trigger or something to stimulate me to do the things that are in my best interest. And I think that the Get Up and Go Challenge and many other challenges help continuously help me over the last God, decades. I've done challenges for decades uh, and they've helped me to get the results that I want in any area, in many areas and aspects of my life. Not only business, but especially uh, continuous improvement, my physical well-being. Last, in 2019, the end of 2019, I did a 90-day lower your blood pressure challenge. Why? Because my doctor told me if I didn't lower my blood pressure, I was going to have to go on blood pressure medicine. Now, I'm not a, a lover of, of medicines and medications and pharmaceuticals, uh, even though I do take metropolol every day for my heart. I don't, I don't love taking medicines because they have side effects. Even my metropolol has side effects. So... I, I didn't, I dreaded the thought of doing that again. So in order to avoid that, I knew I had to make lifestyle and actual physical changes. And so I went on a 90 day journey to study and, and reduce my blood pressure to the point where I don't even have to check my blood pressure every day because I know that it's gonna always be within the realm of what it should be so that I don't have to take blood pressure medicine. My, my brother-in-law and my grandfather and a lot of people I know have done that with diabetes. They've gotten diabetes and they've gotten it so under control, they don't have to manage it with, with drugs anymore or with shots or insulin. So that's what I'm thinking about today. What is on your plate? I, I am definitely going to, to think about how do I get the challenge, uh, what I normally do with my challenges, how do I get that structure in my life, whether I'm doing a challenge or not. That's my challenge for today because in, in less than a week, I've already noticed I'm missing that. So learn, do, practice, continuously improve or repeat. I think that's my message for today, for me and for you as well. If I can help you in any way, hit me up in the comments below. Just ask. Otherwise, I'll be with you tomorrow to let you know what I'm doing as I transition from the brick and mortar world to the online world. Take care.